stand up so we can adjust yes, the... Yes, sure. Okay, so it's going to be like this. It's a fantastic. I mean, I'm really super happy about the quality. Green screen quality. It's so fantastic. Is it here or yes, the OBS is here? Yeah, OBS is there. How can I... I so what do you want to do? I want to crop it a little. Crop it a bit? Yes. So it's a uh, video capsule device. I need to take, I need to unlock it. Okay, yes. now I'm unlocking. Okay, okay I'm going. Uh, I will go and no, it's perfect. Oh, okay. It's perfect. So let me just go and get some coffee, and we're ready to get started. Okay, don't you want to check anything else? Like no, I'm good. No, yeah, yeah. If you can just check the sound when we get started, then that's it. Okay. That's it. Good. So this is a mic check. So, okay, let us make a bet. I say that this thing won't last till next year. 
<laughs> so we have we have a deal. We have a deal. We have a deal. Coffee, of course. Hot liquor or coffee? Which one do you prefer? Are you drinking hot liquor? No. Okay, coffee then. Coffee. But good quality coffee. Need to be Pelleni, Pel. Okay, some of this good stuff. Okay, so we're getting started momentarily. Uh, I need to put this guy on. <laughs> Okay, so good. So we have a mic check, we have everything good to go. Here. Okay, and I, I think that I make this incorrectly. Yes, I made it incorrectly. So I first need to connect this one. Ah, <clears throat> uh, one one more correction. So most of you want want to be off, okay. okay? So that's fine. I think you know it may be. Uh, can, can you follow the stream a little bit to see how we're doing today? Because there is a possibility that I will close earlier than uh, than usually. Okay. And why? Because guys, I'm tired today. I'm very tired. You know, as, I, as I've been having a back-to-back -back meetings yesterday, the full day, and today too. So I'm getting tired. And why is this guy is not willing to cooperate? So what's up with that? Huh. Okay, so let me, let me, do, oh yeah, I think that I can do this, so I can use uh, P and duplicate, this will be the way to go. All right, so now you see. Okay, so, you know, guys, I recognize that the, the, the schedule that is displayed in this slide is not correct, because we will not discuss, discuss, discuss about deformable bodies, but instead we will discuss about uh, artificial intelligence in a framework of mechanical engineering. That's going to be something that will replace, replace that particular subject matter. And there is a recap that is not mentioned here. So we will have a total of six lectures in this period, number two in this class. All right. But what is correct in this slide is that, yes, we're going to discuss about modeling of hydraulics today. And now today is going to be when we really dive into the topic. So we really take a look what makes it possible to model the hydraulics? And the really the fundamental matter in this regard is that we need to understand what is our land fluid theory, because that will be the one that allows us to predict pressures as a function of time. And uh, that I will explain to you today. So that's going to be the main body of today's lecture. And uh, <clears throat> I think we have a time to cover the flow types as well, but we'll see. I will see how I'm doing. So if I get too confusing, Today, you can just say this. Hey, Aki, why don't you, I don't know, go, go back home and uh, come back next week, okay? So far, all, all good. Yeah, probably want to go home already this time. Okay, okay. All right, but anyways, that's what we're going to do. And I got the narrow message in my streaming. So what is this arrow? So, uh, Okay, yeah, I, uh, there is somebody asking, I don't know why they said I got the information that my streaming is not healthy. Pauli, can you take a look like, it seems to be okay, but I got to, uh, this uh, YouTube studio saying that this is unhealthy stream. But anyways, I got the information that the weekly assignment was not um, allowed, I mean, that is not uh, available in a Moodle website in a timely manner. So, we will take care of that. The problem is that the Suraj is traveling this week, and he's traveled already last week. So he's making a visit to India to make a little bit of LUT marketing. So there are some kind of like educational, fair, some kind of meeting events where he's telling students in India that it really makes sense to come here because, you know, the weather is so fantastic. 
I don't know if it's going to explain much about the weather, weather. Maybe not. I hope not. Hope not. But uh, those of you that are Finland uh, first time, I can promise you that the daylight will get much shorter. This is still not much. Correct. Correct. So you will see something much surprising than this. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, so uh, streaming seems to be okay. So it's just a, for some reason I got this error message that the streaming is unhealthy. Okay, but anyway, so we will go, and uh, this guy is locked. Hmm. Okay, so let me take this back to... No, he's always doing this, I, I don't know why, but when, I'm, when I keep my HDMI connection on and when I put this in a presentation mode it's always not displaying well so I need to do this and then my connection and then it's supposed to be okay very good but really don't know what's up with my um, PowerPoint today because it's not willing to change okay maybe it's a, that's just the first slide I hope that it's just the first slide I will keep it in the Okay, I'm going to keep this in this uh, reading mode just a little while that uh, we can get started in today's lecture. All right, so we discussed about the uh, hydraulics, so we concluded that the hydraulics is a very often used. Hmm. Okay, so obviously the reading mode is not the way to go. So I need to put this uh, presentation mode. But my keyboard is for some reason which I don't understand. When I put this in a presentation mode, my keyboard is not working. And it's not, I can tell you that it's definitely not because of not enough power, not enough forces, because my keyboard is already bending seriously when I do this. Uh, but nothing. How can I move this back and forth? So how come? Okay, and I see that this is... Uh, so as soon as I put this in a presentation mode, it's stuck to one single slide. Really uh, surprising. I have experienced all kinds of technical problems, but never this. Okay, so let me try one more time. I'm going to put this in a presentation mode. And now I see... Yep, now I'm able to go back and forth. But let's see what happens when I connect in my HDMI. Okay. That's okay. Oh, oh look at that. That works. So maybe I should change my uh, department to be a computer science. <laughs> we'll consider that. Yeah, I will consider that. All right, so uh, very good. Okay, so we discussed about the hydraulics, and we concluded that it's a very often used actuator because of the power density. Power density is superior, and the power density means that, you know, with a certain uh, physical dimension, we can produce uh, a certain amount of forces. And that relation, this relation is... Uh, fantastic in the hydraulics. So you can produce a lot of forces, and uh, that's something that is a big benefit in using the hydraulics. Also, uh, it's uh, flexible, but not too flexible. Flexible in a sense that when you, when you have, uh, let's say, that the capping that is operated by hydraulics, it's smooth, solid motion, but it's not as chumpy motion that in electric drives. And it also is not as soft as in the case of pneumatics. Pneumatics is super, super soft, and pneumatics is typically overly soft for heavy machinery. It's been used in certain applications, like even in a paper making processes, where you have, need to use a lot of forces, like even they sometimes press in two rolls together using pneumatics. This, by the way, was a um, concept that was developed by American company Beloit that made the bankruptcy later. So I don't know if this was a reason for bankruptcy, but uh, but at least I've seen that this being used in heavy machinery 
I haven't seen much of other application where the pneumatic is used, but it's okay in a like certain application where you need to have like on off. Example could be the bus doors. They would need to be fully open or fully closed. They could be fine to operate those by pneumatics. Okay, so we. Brakes, yeah, brakes is uh, that's another example. The brakes uh, are often used in a pneumatics. So that's, I mean, not often, but it could be used pneumatics. Possible, it is possible, yes. And then of course in a suspension, there could be a pneumatic uh, suspension. So, uh, so not necessary here, but another means. So it can be used, but it's super flexible. That's its big problem. Hydraulics is flexible, but not overly flexible. And we concluded that it is often used in uh, mobile machinery, in industrial application, and so on and so forth. And uh, what I did not mention in my class, that I'm expecting you to, to master drawing symbols related to hydraulics. Uh, if you have not have any courses, uh, what was that? Okay, if you have not have any courses about hydraulics, you know, we don't speak about, I mean, that when we say hydraulic cylinder, we don't, make a picture about the hydraulic cylinder as it is shown in this left side of my, my uh, slide. I'm not going to make a drawing symbol like this because simply I'm not capable to do so. But I'm going to make something much more simplified. A much more simplified will be this kind of the drawing symbols. Same holds for another components. Like just to give you an example, here is a, a valve and the valve depending what kind of valve you're using. So it, uh, di di dis uh, this is a throttle valve, so that's its drawing symbol. Direction valve that physically look like this will be in a drawing symbol like this. So this tells me that there is a three possible operation condition. Here in the middle, everything is closed. In our left side, everything is connected as shown here. Right side, they're connected like this. And there are spring that puts in this in the middle position. And this is operated by a manual stick, soft. This, what this tells to me. Where is it, where is it you can see the stick in this drawing? I think it is cut it here, but it's somewhere here. That's where you're operating this direction valve to go left and right. Spool will go left and right, and the spool will control the flow rate such that the cylinder will go left or right. The pump will physically look like this, Drawing symbol will be like this. Motor that is running the pump is going to be like this. And then this is pressure relief valve and so on and so forth. So now if you are shy with these drawing symbols, go and uh, refresh your mind about basic hydraulics. Or if you not, don't, know, don't know the basic hydraulics, maybe. Well, I will, uh, let's see if I can offer you a website that you can take a look. But this is all clear to you. So you know the drawing symbols. So the... Drawing symbols in hydraulics is your middle name. Correct. Very good. Very good. Okay. So we discussed shortly about the properties of fluid a week ago. I mean, concluded that modeling perspective, and this is true only in modeling perspective. Modeling perspective, we have two important properties where the one only is important for us. And these two kind of important properties for us is uh, bulk models, that is describing the flexibility of fluid. Flexibility of fluid. And now if you want to take a look at the first in-class quiz of today, I'm asking what is that the bulk modulus is representing? And it's representing flexibility. 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 OK? okay. Maybe the repeating is not the way to make you learn. I don't know. because. Uh, no success in the previous cases. And then uh, viscosity is another property that is important. Viscosity is less important because uh, it takes a place only in a case of uh, laminar flow. Laminar flow is something that takes a place when the pressure difference over the pressure or the valve or the component is small. So let's say that this is a throttle valve there is a P1, P2. So delta P is going to be P1 minus P2. So when this pressure difference is small, let's say, roughly speaking, uh, less than a two bars, 
this range is of course in the dimensions of, of a throttle valve. Then uh, the flow is a lamina in type. <coughs> this kind of uh, case is very unrare, so it's not very common. It's more common that the pressure difference, this one here is very high, 100 bars, hundreds of bars, not hundreds, but uh, more than 100 bars. Way more than a two bars, maybe more than a five bars, and that's when the flow top is turbulent flow. Okay, all right, but let's take a look at uh, what we discussed a week ago. So a week ago, we made this experiment. So we used a rigid container, and we put some fluid in a rigid container, and we press a lid of this rigid container downwards. What happened? What are the consequences of that? Is that the pressure inside of this rigid container will increase, whereas the volume decreases. This ratio between the pressure change and the volume change is our bulk modulus. Okay? So the bulk modulus is a delta P divided by minus delta V. Pressure change divided by volume change, minus in a sign. All right, but this experiment was rarer, something that you don't see much in real life, because a container is a unit in a size. And if you want to extend this to be other size of the containers, then you need to take a container size into account. And you do that by dividing the whole definition by volume size. This is going to be your definition of bulk models. Still, this is unrealistic, because uh, you know what matters, what makes a big difference in practice is that you know there's more than a one container where the flexibility makes an effect. Let me give you an example. There could be two containers that are connected together like it is shown in this scenario. And in this scenario, if you think about how is a flow, and if there's anything that introduces the pressure differences between these two containers, there's nothing. So if the pressure in this container number one, in this corner, is having the certain numerical value, that same pressure definitely affects this other corner. Why? Because there is nothing that will introduce the pressure difference. There is no throttles. Flow can travel back and forth as they want. There is no limitation in that regard. That's why I can say that safely, that the pressure within these two containers is equally distributed. Why wouldn't it? There's nothing like that. The scenario would be completely different if I would be, would be here, making here a throttle valve. Throttle will introduce limitation in terms of flow, and that will introduce the pressure differences between these two containers, which is not the case here. So the pressure is same. Okay, so what in this case, you know, what is uh, this experiment that I did? You know, I have this volume number one, volume number two, which is in initially same than the fluid volumes in both of the containers, because I make no changes here whatsoever. All right? Then I will introduce the volume change here. I don't, I don't know how I do this, but this is like a mathematical definition. What happens is that, the, you know, then uh, the container is getting smaller and then this uh, 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 the fluid this uh, uh, excuse me container is getting bigger and uh, the fluid getting smaller this is what happens in my experiment and when i using this definition that i divided or that i figured it out in my previous experiment i can simplify this notation or i can use this information here when i using these substitutions i can create the equation that tells how is a bulk modulus that is accounting the flexibility of the containers and the fluid simultaneously. Now I have two containers, same fluid in the both of the containers. Containers are getting bigger, fluid is getting smaller in my experiment. And when I divide this, or when I do the mathematical manipulation, I can express it as it is shown here. Now, this is different than the bulk modulus that I introduced previous case. Not much of a difference, but the minor difference. This one here having a different name and a different, a little bit different physical interpretation. This one here is called effective bulk models. 
Bulk model is only the one that is taking the flexibility of fluids into account. Effective bulk model is something that takes the flexibility of the fluid and flexibility of the containers into account. So this is a combination of flexibilities, not the single flexibility, but the flexibility is associated to containers, regardless how many you need to take it into account, and the fluid within these containers. Okay, that is called effective bulk models. Now, if I... Flexibility of the container, how much uh, the volume will change? How much it changes? For the container itself. The container itself. Not really. I mean, the, usually when I look at the how much the, so if I just uh, look at the one common use, commonly used con component, which is a hydraulic cylinder, it's made out of the steel, and the typically wall uh, thickness is like uh, uh, 10, uh, 15 millimeters. So the flexibility is not very significant. It's not something that is making a significant effect. But there are other components that the flexibility of the components itself is actually significant. One example is hoses. Hoses that are made out of the rubber material. So in the hoses, even though that they are still net within the hoses, still the flexibility of the hose typically is very significant. The most significant component in terms of flexibility is dissolved air. Air that comes in your hydraulic circuit. This is something that in theory you have no air whatsoever, but that's only in theory. In real life, it's very common that you have a certain amount of dissolved air. How much? Very difficult to know, very difficult to know. And, uh, and this flexibility of this air that is within your oil, you know, air, like we discussed a week ago, is 1,500 times more flexible than the fluid. So you don't need to have much of the air in your system. And it started to contribute significantly to flexibility. Of course, this is a situation you wanted to avoid. And there are ways that you can get rid of the, at least in theory, you, there's a way to get rid of the dissolved air. So you can drive your hydraulic cylinder from the bottom to the as much extended that it can be. And this in theory is take the air away. But it's still possible there is a certain amount of air in your system. Those of you that are interested in uh, cars and wanted to, to make your cars to be more in a rally style, you know, one of the, the big problems in a car is the brakes. Cars, they are not operated by pneumatics, but the fluids. And the fluids, if you get even a little bit of air in your brakes, you know how it happen, happens. So then you can brake it as much as you can, nothing really happens because the flexibility increases so much. So this is a good example of what happens if there's an air. You know, you can get rid of the, from your brake system from the air, but not necessarily that easy to do that. So sometimes it needs a significant effort to do so. Okay, so. So the air we consider as a flexibility from the fluid or from the Another, so it's not con it's considered as a separate factor. Okay, so let me continue my story. Okay, so I'm going to simplify the equation that I derived in my previous slide by making a few approximations, which is not exactly what happens in a real life, but uh, I'm making a simple approximation. So I'm saying that the entire volume, when I wanted to take a look, is my volume container number one, container number two. And then uh, I will roughly make this uh, things about how much is a fluid volume versus the container volume, because they don't change that much. The difference is, in, let's say, not so significant. And when I do this in a both of the containers, I can express my effective bulk modulus as it is shown here. And now this is where you can see the contribution of each of the components. This experiment, if I take myself back here, I have three components. Fluid, which is all over. This is my first component. Second component is container number one. Third component is my container number three. And because the pressure is same within this entire experiment, I need to take these three components into account. All right? And when I do so, 
this is how my effective bulk modulus can be put it in a right. All right. Now, what if I have more components? What if I have hose line that is connected to these two containers? So that too need to be accounted. I need to be accounted as it is shown in this equation that describes the effective bulk modulus. This is how I take my second container into account, or let me be more specific, flexibility of the second container into account. So what I have here is my volume size. The here is a total volume, everything accounted. This is a, I was waiting for you. I get very worried, I was very, very worried. <laughs> and this is a flexibility that is associated to my second container. Now, if there would be a certain amount of oil, excuse me, air involved, you do the same. You make an approximation, how much air with respect to entire volume you're looking at, and then uh, the flexibility of air, which here is very, very small number. It's actually, you know, depending on the units you use, but if we use a megapascal, it's a one megapascal. Whereas a fluid was a 1,500 megapascal. So that's how you can take everything into account. Okay? And again, effective bulk modulus describe flexibility. 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 No, flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I do have one more question. Could you go back a couple of slides? Sure. Um, so you are not happy about this equation? No, I'm happy about this equation. Okay. Let's move. Let's, let's go on. First. This one. No, no, no. To the next slide. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what, uh, what I know, I, okay, I know what you're asking. So where this, uh, you know, what, what is his substitution? Because from this equation, I can, I can solve whatever I want from this equation. What I did in this case was that I solved this uh, volume change. And that's what I substituted to this equation. That's what I did. Yeah. That was the trick that I did. Okay. Okay. This is a mathematical change. So I'm introducing that. It's like uh, this uh, virtual displacement, or delta or something. So this is a mathematical thing. I don't. I'm not telling you how to do it. So because this is a math. Okay. And this is what is a little bit like a concept that is not easy to tell. Previous case was clear because I had my lid, yeah. so I compressed my lid. Here I don't tell how I do that, but I'm just changing that I'm introducing the volume change to the entire system. That's where it comes from. Okay. So that's why it's a bit confusing. But what matters, end of the day, is this equation. Now here I have my air, this of air taken into account. Now the big problem is this, that the dissolved air, that the whole flexibility is a function of so many parameters that the use of in practical life becomes to be difficult. It's very, very difficult. So you need to make a lot of assumptions about Okay, how is my flexibility of hoses? Because hose flexibility is something that is extremely difficult to get. You know that they are flexible, but how flexible? Difficult to get. So we can take a look at their previously made measurements and try to make estimation based on that. Also, how much is a, how much, what is the real amount of dissolved air? Extremely difficult to know. That's not easy to know. And it can even change during the operation of your hydraulic system because Maybe in the beginning you have serious amount of dissolved air, but that all goes to tank. And in the tank, that uh, problem disappears. That's possible. But anyways, so let me show you how much the dissolved air makes a difference. So I have here measurements. And, uh, you know, this is a pressure. 
this is in megapascal. So if you want to express this in a parse, you can simply add one zero to each of the numbers here. So the one number that is here in the middle is 10. So in the bars, it's 100 bars. Okay, and this is a bulk modulus, which is a megapascal. And take a look what happened if you have here, what is this number? 15% of this salt there. So it reduced the flexibility very significantly, particularly when you deal with this very small, uh, low pressures. So below 100, so the effect is really, really significant. This is something that should be taken into account. But can we really take this into account? Uh, what could be a good number to, to, uh, that you can see in real life? 15% is very excessive. I don't think you can have that much dissolved there. But then the, the next number is 10%. That's also quite high, 5%. 2% is something that is safe choice. So I recommend you to use that. Another big puzzle is this one. You know, here is another experiment. He, this one here is a pressure, again, in megapascal, but this is a 200 bars if you prefer to use bars. And this is a flexibility. Now look at the numbers that I have here. This is a hose a system where the hose is playing the major role in terms of flexibility, and it does. It does, because when you look at this number, this is a 400. Remember, the flexibility of fluid was 1,500, so it's reducing a lot. Now, what we learn from this? If you want to increase the flexibility of hydraulics, don't use hoses, use pipelines. So because uh, this is a typical trick, like if you have a problem in a vibration problem in your hydraulics, usually what helps is increase the stiffness. That's, that's a usual trick. It's because there are two factors that you can use, mass and stiffness. Mass is hard to change. Stiffness you can play with. And the one thing you can play with the ma uh, stiffness is to use steel hoses rather than the rubber I mean, steel pipes rather than uh, rubber hoses. Steel pipes rather than uh, rubber hoses. Okay. Because steel is more rigid. Could you, like, uh, I actually didn't understand why. Why? Okay. Yeah. Because if you look at the structure of the hoses, they are made out of the rubber material because you want to bend them. They are very pleasant to use, yeah. very pleasant to install because you have all the flexibility. Yeah. So this is, uh, that makes them very attractive to use, particularly in mobile machinery. You know, brakes, think about the car brakes. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to use uh, steel pipes, you need to have a muscles as big as mine. Yeah. Big problem, yeah. big problem. Then you can bend it. But if not, how can I do it? The only way to go is using hoses okay. or tools. Maybe be tools. But, but the, but the Because, uh, oh yeah, this is a this is a, so you said that you see that this is quadratic relation. So this is a yeah. so this is not linear relation. You're right about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not there even a linear relation. No, which, no, I mean not in general. It's not linear, but it's somehow like exponential. Yeah, it's quadratic. Yeah. Quadratic exponential. Yeah. I agree with that. So uh, after some amount of pressure, uh, it's probably it's leveling it's off. But yeah, look at. Yeah, but look at the number that I have here. This is already 240 bars. This is a very high bar. This is, I mean, that in real practical application, I would say that the maximum would be right, pretty much this, 360 bars. 200. Yeah, so it's not, uh, but even 240 is already a very high, uh, high number. Okay. Quite high number. So because we not, okay, this is very important you to know. So in a, in a hydraulics, so the pressures are usually what the pressures that are affecting in your system is like, let's say less than a 200 bars. So the pump can produce this 360 bar, whereas in a pneumatic is that the pressures you use are six bars or less, six bars or less. That's why the power density, you know, you understand the power density because if you have a hydraulic cylinder like this, the force produced by a cylinder will be in relation of a cross section of this piston and the pressure. This is your force. Yeah. And the pressure, if this is low, the force will be low as well. Yeah. But for instance, just for me to grasp the idea how 
big uh, like 250 bars or like uh, for instance in the combustion engine for if for each for one of the each cylinder uh -huh. for, okay for, for like, uh, when they for compress the, when they compress that uh, yeah. But this is a this uh, what is a pressure when they really compress just before they they ignition? That's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you can just say that uh, okay, so some uh, tires on uh, tires, vehicles, uh, tires. How, how how many bars are that? Are you mean you my in my bicycle tires? In my bicycle tires, I have two bars. Two bars. Two bars. And uh, in your vehicle? My vehicle. It's a two bar, you, in your car, do you have a car? No. Okay, so uh, those of you that have a car, it's two bars as well. I mean that in a heavy, heavy vehicles, it could be like 2.4. When it is flat tire, one. Then it's not fun to run anymore. Okay. And then in the hydraulics, same quantity, but 240. 240. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is, we are speaking about, you yeah, know, like completely different planet. Yeah. So is it, uh, is it uh, because of the velocity? Uh, excuse me. Is it uh, because of the density? And no, it's just that this is just the properties of fluid. Properties. Fluid. Fluid is having this property that you can pressurize it more. You can just simply pressurize it more. Because of the flexibility, it's going to be so hard to pressurize the pneumatics. I don't know if, you, if you, even theory you can pressurize it. Yeah, I don't think that you can pressurize it really much more than a six bars. It's going to be difficult because also the temperature will change a lot. Yeah. yeah so this better. this is not so uh, critical in terms of temperature. Okay. All right. So here is something that I, I want to show to introduce this to you because one of the weekly assignments, and still want to apologize that the weekly assignments are a little bit left behind, but one of the weekly assignments I have a case where there is a a symbol crane like like this, there's a revel joint here, there's a mass here, and then there is a hydraulic cylinder. We ask him what is a natural frequency of this system? Natural frequency that is a relation between the stiffness and the mass. Spring. spring, all right? So where is that we have a spring here? We have a spring here because of the hydraulic cylinder. So the cylinder is actually a spring. So we need to figure out what is a spring coefficient in this case, all right? So let me explain how the spring coefficient, okay, so how the spring coefficient can be computed. Spring coefficient is always a difference between the force and the displacement. Force and the displacement as it is shown here. Okay, how is a force? How is that I can compute the difference in a force? In a force in this two-way cylinder, is a pressure applying here, this side. So there is a pressure pushing the system upright or more like in the direction of Y coordinate system. How much is pressing to this, pressing to this direction will be pressure to multiply by corresponding cross section area. And now I'm speaking about the difference in force. That's why I have here delta P2. Mathematics, math. Then I have pressure here that is pressing the piston opposite direction. It's kind of breaking the motion when I'm moving this in uh, upright or more like uh, Y direction. How much? This is a pressure one multiplied by corresponding cross section area, but minus in a size because it's resisting the motion. Okay? So uh, now, when I think about what is the difference of displacement, this difference of displacement is related to difference of volumes and the corresponding cross-section areas again. So when I substitute that information to my spring coefficient, and when I do a little bit of uh, mathematical manipulation and using my definition of bulk models, my K can be computed like this. So it's a bulk models multiplied by cross-section area 1 power 2 divided by corresponding volume size, and then the cross section two power two divided by corresponding volume size. This is your stiffness. The only thing left for you to do is to figure the mass. And when you do that, just the one more hint to you, because here, you know, you need to take into account that this distance 
and this distance will introduce your level R. So you need to take that into account. This distance, let's say if this distance is 1, this distance is uh, 0 0.1, oh, 0 0.1, then this hydraulic cylinder feels the mass such that is like 10 times higher than it would be otherwise. Because, because of the moment. Because of the moment. Correct. Correct. Because of the moment. Okay. Fluid. 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 This time, because, you know, what I have here is nothing but, you know, hydraulic cylinder. And I can, you know, the flexibility of the hydraulic cylinder itself is uh, not making much of a change. The hoses will. Correct, correct, correct. If there would be a hose connection, like if the hose will go out, hose flexibility should be taken into account. Yes, sir. Change of volume, change of... Change of volume that uh, the uh, material is able to incorporate. So why is it a good practice to design it on the basis of uh, maximum pressure, but instead of the amount of change in volume that the pressure induces? Okay, so now, uh, so, so again, so you need to explain me. So you say that, so, so can you please repeat one more time? Uh, so for example, if you have a hose pipe. So hose pipe. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. It's not taking, it's not changing, it's not actually taking the volume change into account. Because, okay, the, the online participants, the question was very good. So it was related to this equation. You know, if you look at this, this is, I'm not taking the volume change into account. This is the entire volume size, the one that is Vt here. And this is corresponding volume one, number one. Not the change of it, but just the volume, how it is. Now, if this... Yeah, so if you have a hydraulic cylinder, they will change. You are right about that. They will change. And you, you can take this into account in your simulation. So you can say that the entire volume will be roughly... Well, that too will change, because if the piston go up and down, so it will change, and then this will change as well. Yeah, you can take that into account, but... Now, in a certain moment, this is what it is. So I'm not changing anything here at a certain time. But okay. yes? So how much um, delta, OK, change of the volume. How, that depends on what kind of the component you're looking at. So if you, again, if you deal with the hose pipes, hoses, then the flexibility can be more significant than in the steel components. You should actually, there is a, you know, symbol, uh, there is a, I think, here it is. This is how you can take this into account if you're dealing with the steel material. So this is something that is a symbol equation from the strength of materials that I'm sure you have seen before. So here I have elastic models that is for steel material. I don't think that much of the uh, aluminum is used here. This is a wall thickness and this is a diameter. And typically in the hydraulics, we're speaking things that are uh, round in shape. Inner diameter or outer diameter? Inner. Inner, because then the, the T is uh, taking the thickness into account. Yes? Uh, okay, so this I don't know because uh, they both happen simultaneously. So just asking like chicken egg, chicken egg. What do we mean by the flexibility? Because this is all about the relation between the pressure difference and the volume difference. That that's what the bulk modulus is about. That's what it's telling you. That's by the definition. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, so the flexibility in a steel is very high, whereas in a hoses is low. It's about the number that comes out from this equation. So think about, you know, think about this equation. 
you know, the diameter is same, but you're using uh, steel elastic modulus or you're using rubber. Rubber is much lower. So that's why try to avoid the rubber. I know that is not easy. That is not so easy to compute. Uh, why not? Because the way that the rubber, I mean, the roll hoses are made is like, if you look at the inner, inner this is where the fluid is. This is kind of like a rubber material, but not only rubber material, because if this would be rubber, then the hose will get like this big when you pressurize it this much. So there are steel nets, yeah. steel nets inside. A steel net prevent this expansion. So how much they will introduce the increase of flexibility? Quite a bit. But how much exactly? Very hard to know. Very hard to know. What is this? Why is it that we are discussing here? Is there more interaction? That is it that you, you guys like more the subject matter of hydraulics than multi-body system dynamics? Yes. What? Can't really say. Okay, okay, here's my friend. So can, yeah. can't really say. Yeah, too early to say, too early to say. Yeah. Too early to say. Too early because, uh, but what about this? Now we, this is a moment of truth. You know, we don't care if you like it or not, but are you able to learn it? That's the really the key issue here. Is this on? Can you see if this is on or not? Yeah, yeah. It's on, okay. Yeah. Bulk modulus in hydraulics. This is a moment of truth. So we've been discussing now 45 minutes about this particular subject matter. I would be very, very, very disappointed if we're scoring less than 90%. Less than 90%, I will go home. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase this. Less than 90%, you go home. Yeah, I'm going to say students. <laughs> okay, so bulk modulus in hydraulics describe force produced by a cylinder. Uh, flexibility, compressibility of hydraulics, oil amount in circuit, number of components in hydraulic circuit. One all is correct. What if this is going to be 100%? Are we gonna, how are we going to celebrate that? We need to know how to celebrate. Good. One at a time. Okay, so one, yeah, sure. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Assignment. Less assignment. One assignment, each of you will score 100%. Four points. That would be fantastic. Really fantastic. How many, uh, okay, I don't know how many participants we have. I don't, I'm not able to take a look at the Socrative at the moment, but let me do the following. Let me explain the next topic, which is gonna be very brief. And then the five minutes break, and then you need to come back with the full strength, full strength, yeah. because then comes the most important subject matter of the hydraulics. Lamp, loop fluid theory. Lamp, fluid theory. How you compute the pressure as a function of time. Okay, viscosity. Like I mentioned, viscosity only important in case of certain kind of the flow types, which is not common flow types. Laminar flow doesn't really take much of a place in real life. It's in certain cases, but yeah, really is not so important. So how we know the viscosity? You know, we can make, uh, we can figure it out by making an experiment. Sets that I have here, a rigid, body. I don't know what it is. A body that is not moving anywhere at all. So this is my ground body. And then I have here a plate. And I'm moving this plate by using the constant velocity V here. Constant velocity. And now because of the fluid. When you look at the fluid particles, the particles. Yes, particles. I thought that well, I'm never going to mention the particles to you anymore. But I, uh, you know, I still need to mention these particles. The fluid particles that are closer, the, the surface that are not moving, their velocity is zero. They're moving nowhere. Whereas the particles that are right next to this plate, their velocity is same than the velocity of plate. Rest, we can make a safe choice based on uh, Newtonian fluids and the other hydraulic fluids are Newtonian fluids, that the velocity is linearly divided. So the one in the middle, having half the speed of the plate, and so on and so forth. So that's how you compute each of the particles velocity. All right, so what I do then is that I'm computing force 
that I need to do this experiment. Okay, force that I need, I need to know the cross-section area of this plate. This is going to be this one here. And then I need to know this uh, velocity. I need to know the thickness of fluid. How much is the thickness of the fluid? And then comes one more parameter that I'm after here. And the parameter that I'm after here is called this new. Pauli, is it correct? New? New. 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 Okay. Which is called viscosity. Absolute viscosity. Very good. So uh, this is not yet theta. It's not yet theta. Eta. Is it? This is eta. Eta. You know that you know you can read it by yourself. I don't. I don't even need to say anything at all here. I can just pinpoint this, that, uh, like this. So it's very simple. Simple teaching. Eta. Eta. Anyways, makes no difference. Makes no difference. Okay. Makes no difference. Okay. So, but what I will do is that I'm, you will use the definition of shear force, which is this tau, is equal than force divided by cross section. Now, when I do that then my thaw can be expressed like this. This is what the, all the hydraulic fluids are behaving like this. And that's why they're called Newtonian uh, law and Newtonian fluids. Not often used. More practically used is something that is a kinematic viscosity. Kinematic viscosity, you can get by dividing this eta by density. And when you do that, then this is how the viscosity looks like. Viscosity modeling perspective is a big big monster evil man why because it's a function of so many things including the temperature you know that you know if you want to make sure that your car engine is doing fine you shouldn't press you shouldn't push too much about your car when the engine is not warm enough why because the viscosity is not yet there where it's supposed to be so you need to make sure that the temperature is having the temperature the car would like to have it, and then you can push your engine. Okay, so that's, that's and you see here is a experiment that are showing how much it is a function of the temperature. And oh my God, take a look at this. This is in a logarithmic scale. So it's making a major difference. So it's a really is a heavy function of the temperature. It is a, also a function of the pressure. But in a modeling perspective, we typically need to make an assumption that we need to pinpoint one constant value. Is the uh, uh, vertical value, horizontal value, is it V? Is it the yes. volume? No, 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 this is this guy. Kinematic viscosity. Okay. Kinematic viscosity. And kinematic viscosity, SI units are meter power two divided by seconds. But very often you can use this... Uh, Society of Automobile Engineering uh, units. I'm, I'm sure if you want to get the oil to your engine, you don't know what is SI units, but you can see this. There is a relation between the SI units and uh, Society of Automobile Engineering. Automobile Engineering, I think it is American thing. I think it is. Now, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's American thing, and they are so powerful that if you want to get the oil, this is how you can get the certain kind of oil, not based on the SI units, which is a little bit weird. But it's like I've been always telling the bars, which is not SI units either. Hydraulics is very common to speak about the bars. Okay, so that's the, my last thing about the fluid properties. And then, like I promised, the next one will be lamp fluid theory, which is extremely important. Before you go, let's celebrate. Celebrate. Name of the celebration is this. Okay. How come I don't have my? Where is my soccer even now? Okay, it's a quiz. All right, here it is. 71 answers. 
always the same amount, yeah. which is great, which is really, really great because you know how the bass is course, following the lectures, correct, correct, following the lectures all the time. And 100% look like this. Oh my God. Oh my God, but we can, we can round this up. We can round this, but this close, this close. So you were this close, but 1%, one, one person, one person thought that it is somehow related to forces and uh, forces produced by a cylinder. Could be, could be, you know, the, you know, because he realized that he, you know, we are scoring the hundred percent that he's the last one. He started to shaking like this <laughs> when pressing. Oh my God, I accidentally pressed the incorrect one. Ah, oh, what a mistake. It can happen. It happens in life. All right, five minutes and then we're going to take a look at the alarm fluid theory. All right, five minutes. All right, let me take a look at that. Uh, somebody is asking, you're asking repeat no, this. I was asking to repeat So on that point, I can't remember the class. Okay. Uh, I think that's the answer because I was finished. All right. Do you have any more coffee? No. I cannot drink much coffee this time of the night. Okay. This time of <laughs> <laughs> Not evening, but night. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, guys, so we are ready to go again. So, uh, this thing. All right, long fluid theory will be next. Okay, so um, what I will do here is that I'll first explain what is a concept, how you use this concept of long fluid theory, and then what follows after that is that I'm going to derive the equation that actually describes this first order differential equation that will be a function of flexibility, volume size, and flow rate in and out of the volume. So. So, but first, let's take a look at the, how you can use this concept. So this is something that it's kind of like a, somehow related to a numerical modeling like everything else, such that you need to discretize whatever you wanted to analyze. In case of hydraulics, the discretization is much more simple than in the case of, for example, finite term model. Because finite term model, the discretization is where you're describing your structure by using elements. And this requires quite a bit of engineering knowledge to be able to do so. Here, you know, what we're gonna do with the alarm fluid theory is that we're gonna divide the hydraulic circuit within the volumes where we're making assumption that in these volumes, the pressure is equally distributed. This selection is obvious. Typically, it's very obvious. So it's like everything except you know, everything, everything, all the components are dividing the hydraulic circuit within the certain clear volumes, and then you're just computing the volumes or using the pressure comp uh, equation to describe how much is the pressure at each given time in these uh, areas. Okay, but before we go in there, I got the note that I have made a major mistake. So the director called me during the break. The director was uh, following the YouTube and... Uh, he discovered that I said something very much incorrect in my previous lecture, because I said that flexibility of steel hoses is lower than flexibility of uh, rubber hoses. This is what I said. No, you said the other way around. More, steel is more flexible. Steel is more flexible. Steel is more flexible. Steel is more rigid still is more rigid. I made a mistake there. So what I wanted to say, because there are two things that, are, that makes myself confused. Effective bulk models and flexibility. And they are like um, counterpart of each other. So the numerical value of effective bulk models is high. Flexibility is high. It's very rigid. Whereas if the numerical value is low, then it's very compressible. So it's very compressible. Flexibility is, uh, how can I say, high. Deformation is high. This is so confusing. So deformation, let me make this clear. Okay. Okay, okay. Let, 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 no, no, let me try to make this clear. So if I have here, you know, system here. Okay. And I'm going to make this hydraulic cylinder using two different materials. The one is steel, another one is rubber. Okay, and then I have here mass, and I'm gonna put the mass to this system, and I'm looking how much the X goes down because I put the mass here. In the case of rubber, it goes lower. It moves all the way up here. In case of steel, it goes here. Steel is more rigid, more rigid. Put. Yes, okay, yeah, so this is, you, you said it correct, so bulk modulus is, numerical value of bulk modulus is very high. Flexibility, low, low. Deformation, insignificant, very, very small. Another way around, bulk modulus, low, deformability, high. Okay, clear. You, each of you guys are now happy. Rector, are you happy? Rector, I'm asking Rector. Okay, let me take a look at the chat window. He said, very good. 
Yeah. Very good. I'm going to get the salary raise. <laughs> This one. No, 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 no. You introduced the uh, uh, equation for uh, flexibility. Let's go ahead. Flexible. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. This one. This one. This is a flexibility. This is stiffness. Stiffness. Oh, this is stiffness. Stiffness. Okay. 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 And look where I'm using my stiffness. I'm look comparing. Oh. I'm comparing in using my stiffness. I'm comparing the natural frequency. All right. Okay. But now, let me get. Now this is clear. You are happy? Yep. Online participants, are they happy? I see somebody is giving me a heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's still very much accounted. Okay. Very good. Okay. Let me take myself back to the land flow theory. Okay. Land flow theory. We're dividing our hydraulic circle within the volumes where we are assuming the pressure to be equally distributed. That means that pressure waves. So if there's a pressure waves where the pressure is changing within the volume, we cannot take this into account. We just cannot because we are assuming the pressure to be equally distributed within the volume we're looking at. All right. All these, uh, I mean, this says that the pipelines are short in a mobile machinery pipe. These uh, pressure waves are not very common, but they can happen. They can happen like hammers. There's a pressure waves. Very hard to take into account by using this technique. Okay, what we do is that we're dividing our hydraulic circuit in a volumes where we make this assumption about that the pressure is equally distributed, not constant as a function of time, but equally distributed within the volumes. Then we're creating the differential equation, which will be first order differential to describe how is a pressure as a function of time. It will be also a function of uh, flexibility, uh, volume size and the flow rates. That's how it goes. And then uh, each of the components, regardless what it is in real life, just for, you know, pressure relief valve, counterbalance valve, direction valve, we are assuming that there's a throttle that is separating these volumes away from each other. They are introducing pressure differences. That's what they are. And that's how we kind of model them, regardless how they look in the real life. And, uh, you know, and... Uh, the big, of course, the challenge is how is that we can describe, for example, pressure relief valve by using just the throttle equation. But I will show you how to make it happen. That's not going to be today, but next week when we look at the different uh, equation for our hydraulic components. Okay, that's the theory behind. Okay, let's take a look. I have here hydraulic damper. In my hydraulic damper, I have here piston rod that goes through this uh, damper. Then I have here a cylinder body here, and then I have here piston. And in my piston, I have drillings, and these drillings are something that the flow can travel back and forth. All right? So what happened in my damper if I put the force and pressing it downwards? Now this body of the damper is attached here. So what will happen is that the pressure here started to increase. All right? Pressure here started to decrease. But over the time, if I press this downwards a little bit and I leave it there, the pressure will equalize. Why? Because I have here these drillings where the pressure, I mean, the flow can travel back and forth. Flow will compensate the pressure difference eventually. Or how can I say it? Because of the pressure difference, flow will take a place. I don't know. This is a clear chicken egg situation. I don't know what happens first. But you understand what I'm saying here. Eventually, they will be the same. Eventually. But not when I'm moving that. Because, uh, you know, this flow, or let's say these drillings are hypothetically so small that they will, in uh, they will introduce the pressure difference between chamber here and chamber here. Okay. Now, what I can do is that I can say that the pressure within this volume here is equally distributed. So it's safe to say that the pressure, this corner, is going to be the same than the pressure, that corner. But I cannot say that the pressure here is equal than here, simply because the drilling is not big enough, I mean, it's small, 
and because of the small drilling, that is the one that introduced the pressure difference. All right? So how can I model it? I can model in such a way that I'm assuming that this particular system consists of two volumes, upper and lower side of the piston. I need to use two differential equations to compute the behavior of this structure. Now, what is then the one that combines these two volumes together is a flow rate that tries to equalize the pressure difference. That's what it's trying to do all the time. Not necessarily capable to do that at each given time, that, but it's missing is to equalize the pressure difference. Okay, you agree. This is land fluid theory. Only thing left to do is that we need to create this uh, differential equation to compute uh, pressures. And it's going to be a function of flexibility, volume size, flow rate. This is a flow rate. This, is, this Q is a flow rate. Okay. Now, if I would have a hydraulic circuit like this, I know that this is not a very clear picture, but how can I model this? You know, I have here, let me try to explain. I have here a pump. Let's say the pressure source that is uh, introducing the constant pressure source for this system. Then I have here direction valve, and the direction valve is in a position where the lines are connected as shown in a figure. All right, here comes hose line or pipelines. Here comes my first volume as well. So I can make a safe assumption that the pressure just before count the balance valve and the direction valve having the same numerical value. Okay, so this is going to be my, this volume. I cannot say that the pressure here is equal than here because of the counterbalance valve. Counterbalance valve, which is this component here, can introduce the pressure differences. Okay, so I need to have one more volume that is this one here, and then come separate settings because I need to take a look at how is the pressures in a different rod side. They are not connected, they are separate. They are connected because of the motion but not because of the hydraulics. So this one is this guy here, and it's connected all the way to tank, press of the tank. That's my discretization. So I need to have one, two, three differential equations to describe how it behaves. And then finally, once I know the pressure here, pressure here, I can compute the force produced by hydraulic cylinder. Make sense? Okay, let me ask you this. So if I simplify this more, so if I just take one way cylinder, cylinder that uh, is pressurized only in a piston side, not in piston rod side, how will be my uh, discretization in this case? And the options are, like you can see, okay, I don't know if my, is my Socrative on? Let me put it on. Yeah, it's not on. Okay, now it is on. And you don't see this anymore, but... Let me show it to you again. Okay, so these are the discretization options. So this, uh, some of them are related to hydraulic circuit, where it's obviously hydraulic cylinder is a two-way cylinder such that you can pressurize it that from the piston side and piston rod side. Those ones, there's like two rows, like this one here. Okay? Then, uh, then basically what you need to know is that how many different volumes you need to use to describe this simple hydraulic system. How many? You really need to, let's say that if you describe, you know, this is a pressure source, in addition to pressure source, how many you need? Yeah, exactly. Do you need the, like it is shown here, do you need the, in addition to pressure source, do you need one, two, three volumes? Or do you need uh, one, two volumes, or is it just one enough? So basically I'm asking, can you make an assumption that the pressure here is same than pressure here? 
Yeah. Okay. So you go. No. This is going to be low. This is going to be very, very low. How low this will be? Is it going to be less than 70%? 70%. Yes, it will be less than 70%. I don't think so. I think so. I think so. But you owe me so much already that you go bankruptcy. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so we'll see. Okay. Can I, can I move? Okay, are you guys clear? All clear? Um, I just have one more question. Uh, what does it mean? Like, like, there are only like two like, circles, and then you decided to tell us that it, has, it only has one circle. Correct. Okay, but no, no, this is a pressure source. Okay. This is a pressure source. In addition to pressure source, how many volumes you need to describe this? Oh, okay. So it's simple like that. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. So what follows is a little bit math. So let me derive this uh, first order differential equation for you. To make that happen, we need to take a look at the volume, simple volume, which is uh, another experiment here. And I have here mass flow that is coming in mass flow that is leaving from my control volume, okay? So mass flow, you can compute it once you know the flow rate in and the density of the corresponding flow rate. That's gonna be your mass. Like mass flow in, mass flow out. Okay, so this is what comes in, this what goes out. The current amount of mass flow within my volume is this one here. This is only thing that I need to know, okay? So uh, now when, once I uh, use this equation that you all know already a long time back, which is density multiplied by volume size, that's gonna be my mass, correct, correct. What if I'm looking, how is that I can change the mass that is within this volume here, this control volume? The mass can change only if there's a difference between the incoming an outgoing mass rate. If they are having the same numerical values, mass not changing. It's like, okay, how much food I putting in, how much food I consume. If I put more food in, I started gaining f yeah. weight, another way around. Okay, so uh, that's what it is. So it's simple. <laughs> so you don't think that I can be a, one of those fitness masters based on my, my story, or can I? Okay, I, I know what you're thinking. Don't mention that. Okay, all right. So this is an equation. This is a change of the mass. It depends on the difference between incoming and outgoing mass flow. Clear. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to use this equation that was a mass equal than the density multiplied by volume. And I'm going to express the same story as like that. Okay, no difference whatsoever. I do my math here. I computed my differential equation. I still have my flow rate, mass flow in, mass flow out. This is how it's looking like. And this is my uh, equation so far. All right, you're with me. Okay, I do the one very critical step. And I'm using this relation. You know, uh, this relation is coming from, uh, actually it's coming from uh, relation between the density and the volume can be expressed like uh, delta like this. I'm expressing this, and this is minus in a size. I'm using this equation, and then I'm using the definition about models. Enough definition about models, actually. So I can find a relation between the definition, change of the density and the pressure. This is very, very critical for me. And when I do that, you know, this is how my equation looks so far. I'm going to do the final manipulation. Hold on, hold on, final manipulation. I know that you guys are confused. Let's take a look what I have here. I'm moving everything except my delta P to right side of the equation. Delta P is my P dot. P as a function of time. Pressure, pressure. 
Okay, but I started from the density, but using this relation, I switched that to be pressure because the pressure is more convenient to me. Okay, take a look. You know, the pressure, this differential equation, I'm simply integrating from P, I'm integrating P dot, I'm integrating T. That's what I do. Similar way that I use that in uh, multi-body system dynamics. P dot P. Okay. The P is a pressure. But look where the P dot is a function of. It is a function of flexibility because of this guy. So the flexibility is accounted. So it's very critical component. So we are accounting how much it is deforming in each of the configuration. Volume size, it's accounted as it changes as well. This is valid in the case of hydraulic cylinder because in a hydraulic cylinder, volume size is changing as well. Flow rate in and flow rate out is accounted. So those are the components that are in my differential equation. This is very simple differential equation but it's very effective as well. So I can compute the pressure any given time if I know the, how much flow rate is coming in and how much flow rate is leaving. Okay, clear. Okay, let me ask you this. Any, any questions, comments? Because... Uh, I do have one question. Yeah. So, both uh, modules uh, here represent the rigidity or flexibility? It's uh, bulk modules. Bulk models. So we don't speak about the stiffness matrix or anything else. This is a bulk model. It's numerical value of, okay, let me correct that. It's not the bulk models, but it's effective bulk models. Effective bulk models where there is a fluid plus container flexibility. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I wanted to know that uh, if the pressure increases, the, like, the bulk model increases, yeah, you can put it as a you can put the bulk modulus as a function of pressure, but like I mentioned in the beginning, it's always okay, it's safe choice if you say that the bulk modulus here is having the numerical value one thousand one hundred and five thousand megapascal. That's safe choice too. But if you want to make more sophisticated, you can make this to be a function of pressure because the hoses are a function of hose flexibility. No, hose bulk modulus is a function of pressure if that's what you want. Okay. Fantastic. Let me ask you this. Any questions? Because the next one will be in class quiz. Yes, sir. Okay, so if we're going to use this as a static? Okay, in a static case. Static case, correct, correct. So then, okay, in aesthetics, what we need to know is that pressure, what comes out from this equation. So we need to know the pressure. Okay, let's say that you have a configuration like this. Mass, hydraulic cylinder. Let's work this as a two-way cylinder like this. Ah, hmm, not the good drawing. So let me take this drawing away. No, no, I cannot do that because it's going to take forever. So make another drawing like not the drawing like, oh. wrong bottom, correct, I, I accidentally hit the wrong bottom. Okay, here, okay, let me, let me make it again, so you have, now what did you ask? Okay, 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 okay. So in this case, this configuration, so the mass, there's only, only force introduced here is a gravity force. So it's a mass multiplied by gravity constant. That's the force that is compressing this downwards. What keeps it in this position is a pressure A multiplied by corresponding uh, cross-section area minus two corresponding cross-section area. This is a P2, P1. Okay, there the only, because the cross section is not changing, that constant value. So you need to find a proper pressure values to find the static equilibrium. Problem is this, Thank, thanks by the way for asking this, because we have one equation only, but we have two variables. 
So we have infinite number of combination of pressure that keeps this in a constant, uh, I mean, this in a static position. Which one is correct? Everything is correct, mathematically. And everything is correct also in a simulation. What helps? What is a way to find a static equilibrium is that you run the dynamics for a little while. You let the pressures to kind of like find the equilibrium and you use those values. Okay, good question. Very good question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, no flow, no flow, no flow. Yeah. The, yeah. This this uh, p dot will be zero. Correct. It's done. No, no, pressure P dot is only that time um, is like a, okay, how can I say it? It's like, if this is time and this is pressure, you know, is that is a, is a tangent of the pressure. So if it is, you know, like here, it's tangent. Yes. Good. Very good. Okay, last in class quiz. Love fluid theory ignores is not accounting. So what is that is not accounting? Pressure waves. That's option number. So it's not, okay, let me put it on. Okay, let me first do this and then I will get back to you in this last in class quiz. Okay, so uh, success rate in this guy. Okay, you don't see it yet, but you will see it momentarily. Success rate in the Lamp fluid theory. 70. 7 zero. 7 zero. No, 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 I haven't. You have an answer. <laughs> this is this is the second one, not the not this one. Okay, so that very good. 84, 84. And the last one? Last one is this. Okay, lamp fluid theory ignores, not account. Pressure waves, change of the size of hydraulic volume. Physical size of the hydraulic volume, compressibility of hydraulic volume. Take a look at the equation. Take a look at the equation. What is this describing? What is this describing? What is this describing? Here's your answer. Okay, go. Let's go. And my computer want to restart. No, no, you can't restart right now. Okay, this will be the last slide of today's lecture. Then we will go home right after this. Uh, we go home by a smiling face because I think the success rate will be high. 7-0, again, 7-0. We'll see how much it is going to be. Now, yeah, that will be fantastic, but it, what if it is 100%? That will be big celebration. We're going to have a group park. So we're going to have gluten. What? Gluten. Go oh, yeah, uh, with alcohol. Yeah, it's in the afternoon. Yeah, it's night, not yeah. afternoon. <laughs> okay, good. So this is the last slide. Mustafa is here too, so we could we need to close this case. How many? Okay, so we are still expecting few uh, more answers. Last time I think it was sixty. Uh, se was it seventy one really? Because I thought that no, the le second question was less 60, 68. First one was seventy one sixty eight. A second now uh, because many people are tired they want to do something else they are no longer online and many people left already in the lecture rooms so I think the 65 is the number so we're gonna close this we're gonna take a look okay what is it is it gonna be hundred or not no way no way hundred percent but how low we go 90 91 okay 91 Oh my God, 81, okay, good.
this is it. See you guys uh, next week, Tuesday. We're going to continue with the hydraulics, and then what follows is uh, stuff related to artificial intelligence and the games and stuff like that. I know you hate it because you don't like games. But what are you going to do? That you don't like games, or do you like games? Oh. Okay, then you might like my lecture too. Okay, let me close this one. Just a second, I'm going to close my OBS first. OBS.